still got my foot on the brake, I mean, my hand on the brake. If you're on a flat road like this, it's not actually that important because I can start the throttle now and the bike starts to go. If you're on a some kind of a hill, down a hill or up a hill, your bike will start going and it's, you're going to have a lot of control trying to stop your bike with just your legs. So that's why it's important to have your rear brake on. So my brake, brake, is, under, brake is locking the bike at the moment. I'm going to start to apply a little bit of throttle. When I feel that the bike wants to move, that's when I can release that brake gently. So a little bit of throttle, release the brake gently. So that brake, using the brake is very important if you're on an incline or decline that your bike is not rolling away. You're not controlling it with your legs, you're controlling it with the braking system. And then, so my foot, my hand is on the brake, a little bit of engine power, I release the brake, feel the bike go. If you're an absolute beginner, you'll just notice what I've done. I've just taken, I've just been going in a straight line. You've actually got best control with your bike when you're going straight, whether it's accelerating or whether it's stopping. So as a beginner, don't worry about turns just yet. Just get used to taking off gently and smoothly, bringing the bike to a nice stop. You can do that a few times on a nice, like if you get a back street or a car park, just go on a long straight line, take off, stop, take off, stop. When you get to the end of the road, just turn your engine off and just walk your bike around and come back the other way. So don't worry about the turning just yet and I'll do that later in the video. All you're doing now is focusing on the takeoff and the stop. Now what I'm gonna do this time, I'm actually gonna use a mark on the road. So you'll see, once you start to get comfortable with the brakes, you actually wanna designate a point where you're going to stop. So imagine you're in a traffic and there's a stop sign or a red light and you want to park, you want to stop your bike at a specific point. This is a real life scenario. So that's what we're going to practice now. So I'm going to do my best to get my bike to stop. You'll see a crack in the road. That's what I'm trying to stop the bike at. So the first one is just here, a crack in the road, a crack in the concrete. I'm going to stop my bike there. Okay, so you'll notice that I was actually trying to stop right at the specific point. And notice I didn't put my foot down until I actually had the bike stationary. So you use the brakes to stop. You definitely don't use your feet to stop, but I do see beginners put their feet down and try and control the brake. That's no good, for, first of all, for control and balance, but also your legs aren't powerful or strong enough in your shoes to stop a motorcycle. You need to use these brakes. Uh, the, the other thing is, you'll notice that when I'm stopping, I rock the bike to the left and I actually stop and I stop with my right foot still up onto my left side. This technique is used for manual motorcycles. So if you've got a motorcycle with gears, your left foot controls the gears and your right foot actually has a brake. So this is, if you're a, if you're a beginner, get used to that technique. Come to a stop, drop the bike onto your left leg. Come to a stop drop your bike to your left leg. Now a couple of little things that you could do, a couple of little practices for your, um, for your motorcycle when you're getting familiar with, with stopping, is try to get more speed up. So the higher your speed and then bring the bike to a stop. Get used to the rear brake, get used to the front brake, get used to using both brakes. Then do this when there's no traffic around because you wanna con concentrate on the bike system, on the braking system, getting familiar with the brakes. 
not only are you increasing your skills, but you're actually getting familiar with your motorcycle. So just imagine you've hopped on your, a bike for the first time. You're not sure what the brakes are like and brake, each bike, each car, each truck is a little bit different. So take a moment just to get familiar with what the brakes are like. Do they grab quickly? Do they grab softly? Are they a bit doughy? So you go in the back streets or a car park and just get the feel of the brakes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do another little run through. I'm gonna use just the rear brake to stop. Then I'm gonna use just the front brake to stop. And then I'm gonna use both, both brakes together. That was just rear brake, rear brake only. I'll do rear brake one more time. Okay, that was just the front brake and the feel of the bike is very, very different. Because when you're using the front brake, you'll come off your throttle, you'll do the setup and squeeze, but then you'll feel the bike, because the front brake grabs, the, the, the weight shifts to the front wheel. So it's a very, very different kind of a braking system and a feel of it. So that's why it's important to practice. Use your rear brake to start with. Beginners always start with your, your rear brake. Once you feel comfortable with that, at very low speed, try stopping with just your front brake. I'll do that one more time. I'll do it one more, a bit more speed. Over that way a bit. I want you to see, see the bike kind of drop this way so you get an overall bike view. You see how much the bike moves that way because I was just using my front brake only. But then get used to taking off with your hand on the rear brake, a little bit of throttle, release the brake and then go because that will be important. Because that will be important when you're doing hill starts. If you're on a, any kind of a hill at all, you'll need to use this rear brake before you apply that throttle. So once you get used to the throttle and taking off, you're then gonna get used to the brakes. First of all, get used to the rear brake, stopping with the rear brake. Do it at a slow speed to start with. Then pick up your, increase your speed, increase your speed, till you become very familiar with the rear brake. Then practice stopping to a specific point. Once you're familiar with the back brake, then do the same with the front brake. Get familiar with the front brake. Once you're familiar with your front brake, you're then gonna use both brakes together. And that's what I'm gonna demonstrate right now. Okay, taking off, my, foot on, my hands on the brake. A little bit of throttle. Do you feel the bike wants to go a little bit? And then ease the brake. Okay. Using both brakes is the best way to stop. And you can see in a short space of time I can stop. This is the next thing you need to become familiar with. Stopping with both brakes, getting a nice controlled stop, drop to your left leg. I'll do that one more time. Another thing, this motorcycle here has anti-lock braking system. So that, that system is so that your rear brake will not lock up and you lose control. 
when you're becoming familiar with the bike, it's actually important to get the feel of what that's like. Because if you're in an emergency, that's not the, not the best time to test out your anti-lock braking system, your ABS system. So try it out the back streets. See what the limits of the bike is. I would recommend this a bit later. Build up your confidence with your braking first, but beginning familiar with the brake, you can use that ABS to feel what it's like. So you know what the limits of the bike are. Okay, coming to a stop again. I'm just using the rear brake this time. Ready up, squeezing, coming to a stop. Taking off, a little bit of throttle, release the brake. Once I'm going, I can then increase the throttle to get the speed going. Okay, I'm coming to a stop now with both front brake and rear brake. So off the throttle, front brake and rear brake, left foot goes down. Taking off. Okay, so for the beginner, just turn the engine off and you can just walk the bike around. <laughs> It's harder with a passenger on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get your wheels straight. So you'll have best control for throttle, for accelerating, and best control for braking when it's straight. In fact, I would go so far as to say avoid accelerating, avoid braking on any corners or any turns. You do that when it's straight. I've seen too many people have accidents, fall off, with uh, accelerating on corners and braking on corners. So, so what I mean by that, if we're to take a corner, so if we're taking this right turn up here, we get the speed correct now. I'm doing my braking now. Once I get the speed correct, I then gently go around the corner. So I'm not doing any increase or decrease of speed on any corners. So I get the speed going. Okay, I'm going to take another corner. So, see, I'm doing my braking on the straight part. I'm braking now. Then you maintain your speed. Maintain the speed as you take the corner. Now, when I say don't accelerate, I mean don't increase your speed. Um, so you'll probably need a bit of throttle just to maintain your speed. So maintain a steady speed on any corners. So I'm going to turn around here. I make it so I'm, I've got my throttle on but I'm not increasing I've got my brake on but I'm not increasing the braking so you use your accelerator and brake to control around corners but not to increase or not to decrease so for beginners so I recommend just get used to doing things on the straight to start with stopping slowing down on the straight taking off on the straight increasing on the straight in our next next video I'll talk about cornering in greater detail so you notice with my throttle hand there's you know, I can move my hand back and forth so that was when I was talking about with your wrist straight you want to be able to pull the throttle on but back the throttle off Now, one of the things to do once you get used to riding, you don't want to have to stop if you don't have to. Good drivers, good riders, can just keep the wheels rolling. So at the back of that corner there it was a give way situation. I didn't actually stop. I slowed, 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 kept the bike rolling. I kept my feet up. When I found the opportunity, I then took off. So if you can actually, in the traffic, stopping and starting is not yeah, if you can, can keep control, it's more, uh, more desirable. Now another thing about braking is I talked earlier about the setup and squeeze. By applying a little bit of pressure early to feel where the brake pads make contact, what you're actually also doing is putting your brake lights on. So with your brake lights, it's actually alerting the people who are behind you that you're about to stop. So there's another ma major advantage of the set up and squeeze technique is put your brake lights on early. Warn the people behind you. I'm coming to a stop. 
um, just communicating with the people behind you. The people behind you don't want any last second, last moment stops, no surprises. So communicate with the people behind you by putting brake lights on early. So I've got my rear brake on now, controlling it. A little bit of accelerator and then ease off the brake. A little bit of pressure until you feel contact is being made. Now just go and check the brake lights. So they coming on as soon as I put a little bit of pressure on. lights on I'm gonna back off a little bit because I know they're slowing down or they're coming to a stop so I'll just show you what that looks like from here okay last thing I want to show you for a beginner is because all the exercises that we're starting with is just taking off and stopping taking off and stopping and we're not doing corners yet I just want to show you how to move your bike around um, without uh, before we actually learn how to steer. So once you get, once you've done your takeoff and you come to a stop and you've got to the end of the road, just turn the engine off. Now there's two ways you can walk your bike. You can actually sit on the seat here and move your legs around. If it's a light bike, it shouldn't be too hard. You can also stand up. So I've got control here, so I can walk my bike this way. Now these, both of these techniques are good for short distances. But when you really want to walk it, really want to move it a fair way you actually need to get to the side here. So this is how you're going to turn your bike around. So when you're walking your bike around, two hands on here, get ready to use this brake if you need to, but just notice the angle of the bike. It's actually leaning toward me. If you lean it away from yourself, you could lose control. So keep the bike lean towards yourself so you can then walk it around and turn the wheel if you need to. You've got good control here. So this is handy in a par car park situation. And you've got to move your bike around, but again, get ready to grab that brake if you need to. Move it around. Standing at the side. Once again, short distances, you can just creep it forward by sitting on. And again, see, I'm controlling that brake. 